Hi, this is just a quick method uh, showing how to use MASH to create something like this, an actin filament that's made up of these actin subunits, which are arranged in this paired helical fashion. So I'm just going to do a very rough approximation of this, and you can uh, adapt this to your needs. So the idea is that we want to have the actin subunits, the monomers floating around, I guess it's G-actin, um, floating around sort of randomly and then having them assemble into their shapes. So something like this. I'm just using cones in place. So they're moving randomly and this thing comes along and causes them to form into place. Now, I mean, there's a lot wrong with this, but I, this is just the starting point for creating something like this. So what we're using here, uh, and I'll recreate it in just a second, is a mash. is a mash node. Let me grab the mash waiter or mash editor. So just distributed linearly uh, and it there rotated around X in this case and distributed along X replicating this and then that is rotated in X to give the, the two helices here. Signal node is giving that um, random ish animation animation and then this spring node is probably overkill but it's just allowing them to sort of settle into shape see how they kind of settle in slowly into the shape not really accurate in terms of molecular dynamics i guess but depending on what you want you can try this out and the thing that's moving along here is a fall off node that's acting on the signal. Okay, so let's just recreate this. I'll just, oops, why did I close that? Let's turn this one off. I'm going to use just a cone again, so just so you can see, um, because I want these things to align along the base, however you want them to align, you want to put the pivot point there. So I just created a cone and I moved the pivot point down to the base hitting D and D again to close it, and then I froze the transformations and deleted history. So now we can go to MASH, create a MASH network, instancer, linear. We'll get something like this, and let's just add some more. So we can add the number of points. Let's make this 60. Then we'll have to increase the distance to something like 80 or 100, just maybe even more, just so they kind of fit snugly together and we want them rotating as well so if we rotate x here you can see we're rotating 360 degrees along this length so if we want to rotate this more we just increase that value so we can do 720 i'm not sure if this is the right direction uh, this is a looks like a right-handed rotation which is probably Actually, this looks like a left-handed rotation. So I think, <laughs> just do minus 720. Okay, so now we go to MASH and use the replicator node. So the replicator node just duplicates all that's come before in the MASH network. So the number of replicants, we just need one. And by default, the offset position Z is set to negative two. We don't want that, we'll just go to zero. Instead, we go down to pattern here and do pattern rotation X in our case and 180. Yeah, 180 degrees. And that just kind of rotates it around to the other side. So you can see if I just scrub through this, you can see what's going on. And now they're all aligned in sort of this helical, this double helix. So now we want to, so forget all that curve stuff and now we want to add a signal node. So the signal node is really just an animated noise. So if we play this, let's have it moving around a little bit. So 4D noise, we can change this to local or world. That will just change how it works with the um, like rotations. So 
So, and then the amount, it's going to offset them. You can do something like this so they're really randomly distributed. Very quickly moving so we can reduce the step amount and the time scale to slow them down. can increase the noise. Okay, so something like this, it's not really molecular type motion, but anyway. So, you know, we can animate different things here. We can animate the random strength so they can go back to their shape this way. We can step it, step through, so you can see it's going one a node at a time. And then we can just do them all at once. So if you wanted something to assemble like that, you could do that. But instead, we're going to use a fall off object here. So go to create and you can see by default where the fall off object goes across these things it allows the signal node to have an effect so this is a fall off node associated with the signal node but we can double click on this and turn it invert it so the opposite is true so just within the fall off node it assumes it's shape, which is kind of good, uh, even for something like Actin, because it cycles where it's got a leading edge and a trailing edge, where it dissociates it to trailing edge and assembles at the leading edge. So you could do something like that. So I'm just going to move it outside of the field, make it a bit bigger. And so it would be something like this. So this would be good for Actin cycling. But if you wanted to assume the shape and then stay there, in the fall off node, you change the mode from normal to add. And then when it goes through here, it leaves that behind nicely. OK, so then we can just animate this fall off node. For some reason, it's hard to select sometimes. So there we go. Set a key. Then over, you know, 100 frames, it can go that far, depending on the scale of your scene. Right, and you might want to have a whole other mesh network in here that's not responding to this, so it looks like it's selecting or it's not selecting, but just some of them are moving down. Now, this isn't really accurate. It kind of looks like they've got more agency than the random chance of bumping in to each other, like they're jumping over there. So there are different ways you could do this, I suppose. Um, but this is sort of a more of an illustrative way of what's happening than a true simulation. And then finally, I did add the spring node. So just spring adds some overlapping secondary action when they come to rest here. So you'll see how they kind of settle into, into their position. Let's just go in closer so you can see it happening. That kind of settling there. Again, totally not accurate but you can reduce the spring strength just to give it a little bit so just a tiny bit yeah now the last thing i'm going to show is that you can actually export this 
as an alembic. Um, and so you can turn it into just a model that has this animation built in. To do this, though, you have to select the... Oh, come on. Uh, select the mash node and go to mash utilities, switch mash geometry type, if you started as an instancer, which I did. So I am going to switch this to a repro mesh, which is what you need in order to do this. So because the when you do a mesh mash, it generates actually new geometry rather than just instances. So we can take a look at the animation here. Starts at one, goes to about 70. Is it still moving? Let's just say 80 to be safe. You can also go to cache a limbic cache and export this selection to a limbic. So I've got the repro mesh selected and I'm going to go from frame uh, zero, I guess, to frame, what did I say, 80. Okay, so I realized what I was doing wrong there. Um, sorry, let me just show you this again. I went to a limbic cache, export selection to a limbic. Um, I put in the start as zero but actually my frame start at one here. So I, it wasn't working, I had to switch it to one. Now if I say export selection and type whatever it's called and then export, then you'll get something like this. So now I'll just save this, open up a new file. I'll go to cache, alembic cache and import alembic. Now this isn't a mash node anymore. It's a little bizarre. I don't know. Oh, I guess we brought in those mash nodes. So we don't really need those, but you can see that the geometry simply has the, um, the animation built in. So you can actually just duplicate this now. Actually, you can't just duplicate like that. You have to select this and go to edit, duplicate special, open up the options and make sure you say duplicate input graph. And now if we duplicate this, now we'll have two of them going. So you're going to make something like that happen. And this new one that we just duplicated, if we go into the limbic node, so there's an offset here. So maybe we don't want it to start growing until this part is finished. So we can offset it by 36. Now if we play the animation. Oh, that's, so that's a bit of a problem actually. If I offset it that way, it's not actually moving until until then. So there's probably a solution for that. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but what if we cycled it? We can reverse it. That's interesting. So if you want to have it breaking up, you can do that. What if we bounce? Okay, not a perfect solution, but you could figure this out um, as a way to organize these things to work together. Anyway, so that's how you can use MASH for something like this and uh, perhaps use an Alembic cache to uh, maybe add many copies of this without having to have loads of MASH networks in your scene. Thanks.